I got this Wanho Duplicator i3 Plus from Ultimate3DPrintingStore.com. It's the next generation up from this guy, the Wanho Duplicator i3 version 2. I'm going to unbox this and do a first print on today's Film of Friday. Well, normally I'd cut the top of the box and then take pieces out, but I've opened one of these before, at least this one, and I know it's packaged nicely in some foam, so it's easier to cut the bottom and lift it off. And that's what I did. And it comes in this nice plastic bag that I need to cut. So I'll get out the knife. I found the wand hose are actually packaged really nice. And there's not a lot to set up, so hopefully this is the same way. So we take off the top and there's a box of parts. Some more foam. This thing is packaged actually pretty nicely. Here's the bed. And I can already see it's got better adjustment knobs than the wing nuts that are on the original here. So let's see if that lifts out. Oh yeah, it completely lifts out. Another piece. And then here's the rest of it. This is packaged really nicely. And then we've got a manual, an extra build plate material, and a small sample of filament. Looks like that's it. So now I'll put this together and we'll try out a new print. So I did read the first pages of the manual. Yes, I actually read the manual. And it says to just assemble this to this guy with four screws. So I opened the box and I was surprised what I found. I found the screws and a few extra pieces, USB cable, some rod that isn't in the manual. It's like a big hook. So I don't know what this is. Is this for pushing filament through the extruder? That's what I'm guessing. So you can push it in there and pull it out. Power cord, putty knife with sharp edges, which I think Angus pointed out you don't want. But this was interesting. They give you a tiny drill bit for cleaning the nozzle. That's the first time I've seen a 3D printer give you that. I've seen little cleaning tools that came with my DaVinci 1.0s, they're just a piece of wire and a loop so you can stick it in there. This is an actual drill bit. So that is actually handy for other purposes. <laughs> I may keep it for something other than cleaning the nozzle. And it gives me a full size SD card. This guy over here uses a micro SD, so I already like it. It's using a full size, full size SD card, which is what I prefer. And then it's the same old bracket it mounts on there with the spool holder is somewhere. I saw it. Must have fell on the floor. Anyway, let me put this together. So the base slides right into the carriage here and there's four screws that need to go into the side and this is already an improvement on the original or the version 2 I should say. You just, whoops, you just line up the screw that I can hold the thing and I can reach the screw right here on the front. There's one here, one here, and then on the back. And this guy, you had to kind of like go inside and flip it on its side. This thing I can get to every screw easily. And Ultimate 3D Printing Store sent me this nice tool kit. But it does come with an Allen wrench for tightening these guys, but this is easier. Oh, much easier. So I'm just going to tighten these guys up. And then this... I found the spool holder. It was sitting on the side. This goes on here with two of the same screws. So I can tighten these guys up and I'll have it all assembled. And then I'll connect the wiring. 
So it's all mounted together. It's feeling pretty solid. It looks like it's got some little rubber feet that I need to put underneath this thing to stop that rocking, but it already feels more solid than this guy. But the wiring could not be any easier. Everything's labeled. Like this is A, and A goes right into A, A stepper. Let's plug that in. B is over here on the side, goes in the B stepper. D is over here with B, this little connector. There, those locked up. And then C is over here on this stepper. And then finally, this last ribbon cable plugs into a connector right here on the side of the base. And that's it. The only thing left is to connect the power cord to the back. Oh, it does have that too. On off switch and the power cord goes right in here. This is looking nice already. This is quicker than some of the printers that I've taken apart that claim they're fully assembled. So I plugged in power, flipped it on, and the LCD screen, the touch screen, came to life. Touch screen, I love it. The only other machine I have that has a touch screen is my $1,100 Flashforge Dreamer. So that is really nice. And so now I need to level the bed. And the instructions say to turn it on, home all the axes, and then shut it off, and then adjust the knob with like a piece of paper underneath it. Very typical manual adjustment. So I'll press home. And it is way off. And it says to manually move it to each corner. which is going to take a few minutes. So, I just got a poke or something's hot over here. I don't know, I got a, a ah! I saw smoke coming out of this corner. I felt something was hot. And then I saw smoke. That is not good. This may be the end of this review. Ooh, that's an electrical smell. I'm going to have to check this out, but right now, I can't go any further. So let me find out what's going on, and then I'll get back to you. So I honestly have no idea what happened. I checked everything. I couldn't see any shorts. I couldn't see anything wrong. I powered it off, turned it back on. The LCD came on. It still homes itself. That all looks fine. I was able to adjust every corner. It looks good. I touch it now, and it's cold. So, I think you can see in the film, if you go back, you can see smoke come off this corner. And it was definitely an electrical smell. Something burned. And I shut it off right away. Maybe I prevented it from burning up. I don't know. All I can do is try this out. So I got everything leveled, I think, at least ready for a first test. So I'm going to install some filament. Now they do give me a sample bit of filament, but I really don't like using this loose filament. So I got a spool of some blue PLA. And I think this might have came with uh, the Wanho or... It might have come with my TiVo Tarantula, but it's a nice size. So I'm going to load this, and then I'll print one of the sample files that's on the SD card. And the SD card goes in right here, right on the side, and the USB is here. Looks like there's a reset switch. Now, I did install these little rubber feet that came with it, but they just do not want to stay on. So I either got to glue them in place, or I need to 3D print some better feet, because these are really, really chintzy. But it's more solid than this guy, so I may just go with it for now. So let me load the filament, and then we'll try a sample print. I got the filament loaded, 
and the touch screen worked really nice I preheated it loaded the filament put the SD card on and it's got the OK hand I think is what the sample print is so I loaded that and it's gonna start printing it so that smoke I have no idea what it was but it seems to be working and it's gonna start printing the sample print right now so how about we go to a time-lapse So overall, I think it did a good job. This print came out really nice. Uh, there's some nerds in between the fingers, so the traction may be off a little bit, and this isn't the best plastic, but it's still printed really good. The tops of the fingers are smooth. It's not melted, which tells me temperature control is pretty good on this thing. So I think I think it's a good printer for $499. I think it's a very good printer, and it's under that $500 target I like to be under when I recommend a printer. Um, as far as that smoke, I'm still confused because there's no hole down here where it would have leaked up from the electronics. The board shows no sign of smoking or no sign of burning. The heated bed was not heated. It's just there's no sign of anything burnt. So I really don't know what happened. I'll let Ultimate 3D Printing Store know about this and show them the video. But I just won't run this when I'm away or at night because I just right now I don't trust it. So other than that, I mean, it, it seems like a really good printer. So that's a real mystery to me. So my 10K celebration is still going on. It goes on to the end of the month. I'll put a link down below. You go to that site, you enter your email, and you're entered into the contest. You also are signing up for my newsletter, which I'll be sending out occasionally. I'm not going to sell the email list. But that gets you entered in the contest. For a TiVo Tarantula printer, uh, this shirt, well actually this shirt, and a hat from Ultimate 3D Printing Store, and a roll of filament, I believe, from Matter Hackers. So, we've got three prizes to give away, so if you want to enter into that, just enter your email at that link. It's in the description, too. If you want a Filament Friday sticker, just send me a self-addressed stamped envelope, just like uh, Caesar Lithgow did. He says, I enjoy your channel. Thank you for your dedication. Thanks for watching. Would you consider creating some educational content on how to work with GitHub or how to update Marlin for use in the Fabricator Mini? Now I did do a video, I'll put a link up here, for updating the firmware in Fabricator Mini. So that's kind of covered. Uh, GitHub, I haven't done any work with GitHub. I find GitHub actually very confusing, so uh, I can't help there. Um, I'm attaching a self-addressed stamped envelope. I would enjoy a couple of your stickers. So here's his self-addressed stamped envelope. So Caesar, I'll send you a couple stickers. So if you want some, just send me an envelope. Self-addressed stamped envelope. I'll put the address in the description below. So one more announcement. I will be at the New York Maker Fair, October 1st and 2nd. In fact, I'll be at a meetup that's going to be on October 29th, the Thursday before. At 7 to 10 o'clock in the evening at a local makerspace. I'll put a link to the meetup in the description. It's sponsored by Matter Hackers and uh, Joel Telling, 3D Printing Nerd, will be there. Pressed, Preston of Press Reset will be there and possibly a few other YouTubers. So I'm looking forward to it. It should be a lot of fun. So that's, uh, that's it. Other than once again, if you could help support the channel, a dollar a month to my Patreon account. I know I ask this every week, but it's really what keeps the channel going because AdSense has just dropped um, between people using ad blocker and YouTube Reg, which doesn't seem to pay equal. Uh, my, my revenue has just dropped. I'm almost doing these things for free and I don't mind putting out film on Friday every Friday. I enjoy it. I really do. But there's other things I want to do that take more time and to do that, I want to be compensated for my time and that's what Patreon people do. They're awesome and they have been very generous and I want them rewarded. So I'm turning Patreon kind of into my premium channel for a dollar a month to get extra content and they know about it. I've been talking about it on there. So if you want to join us, it's only a dollar a month. I call it like my private Netflix channel, <laughs> but I'm still enjoying it. I'll still keep putting these out. But if you really want to see more content, it's going to expand on for my Patreon supporters. So join us there if you want. So that's it for this week. I'll see you next time on Filament Friday. Yeah.